After a day of talks in Brussels, a deal to save Greece's teetering economy is still not in place. And the uncertainty has driven thousands onto the streets of Athens. Both anti-Eurozone and pro-EU rallies were held. Police had to separate the rival protests as scuffles did break out. EU supporters have been calling for the country to remain a part of the Eurozone, while others have been urging an end to austerity, whatever it takes. As it stands, however, there are glimpses of a breakthrough, with the Prime Minister saying a new plan is now being looked at by international creditors. Today we submitted our proposal to the institutions with alternative measures that are based on social justice. For the first time the burden is not being put on the pensioners and wage earners. We want a comprehensive and viable solution that is accompanied by a strong growth package that will make the Greek economy viable so that the country can stand on its own feet again. The new proposals are going to completely remove the points of friction between the sides. And a number of EU leaders who took part in the talks admitted there's still a lot of work to do and time is running out. What Greece put forward today is certainly progress. But within our discussion we also noticed that there is a lot of work that needs to be done and we are running out of time. We will continue to work on the basis of a new proposal, which is certainly more comprehensive and includes much more details than what we had seen, but it still lacks specificity, so we're short on time, long on work. I call the summit to put an end to the dangerous uncertainty and to avoid the worst-case scenario, which means chaotic and uncontrollable accident. Yeah, there are two main stumbling blocks hampering the deal. First, pension reform. International lenders are demanding that Athens introduce more benefit cuts. Greece will uh, only agree to gradually raising the retirement age. Uh, second, tax reform. Creditors also want Greece to raise the VAT. But Athens wants it to remain at the same level for basic goods like medicine. Instead, Greece is ready to raise uh, tax on luxury goods and high-profit businesses. Artie's Peter Oliver now reports. These talks were billed initially as the real last chance saloon. It hasn't proved to be that way. But what we are hearing as the talks came to an end in Brussels is that steps have been made towards a potential deal. We're hearing from the AFP news agency quoting sources within the, the Greek government saying that the Greek government have accepted in principle the current bailout to be continued. Now, that could would lead to a... a Deal. It would free up the money that's needed, the 7.2 billion euros worth of bailout money that Greece needs in order to pay off its bills. However, that would also lead to, well, the crossing of some of the red lines for the Greek government. We've heard uh, talk about uh, pensions and VAT coming into the proposals that have been put forward by the Greeks to their main creditors. Now, these are all things that are, may go down well in Brussels, may go down well in Berlin and here in Paris. They're not going to go down too well with the Greek voters in um, in Athens and other elsewhere in Greece. These are the things that they voted Syriza in, the left-wing party that took over the government. They voted them in to not do these type of things. It seems, though, that because we are in a situation whereby a deal has to be done, that they may have to make uh, some real sacrifices in that deal. We heard from Jean-Claude Juncker, the uh, European Commission president. He said that a deal will be done this week because a deal must be done this week. So it isn't the deadline day we all thought it was going to be, but we are expecting some more to come over the next few days. And throughout the crisis, the IMF chief has told Greece uh, to offer a credible program if it wants a deal, because the organization has a responsibility to its 188 members. However, earlier this month, Christine Lagarde suggested the International Monetary Fund could lend a financial lifeline to Ukraine, even if Ukraine cannot pay the money back. The criticism facing the uh, IMF's current policies, though, is summed up in this cartoon, uh, recently published, uh, attempting to show the difference between the approaches to Ukraine and Greece. Economist Richard Wolff says there's a clear lack of consistency. The same old story. There is no difficulty in giving Greece uh, a reduction in its debt. Let me remind you all that in 1953, Germany, which owed enormous sums to Britain, the United States, and France, asked for debt forgiveness. 
it is outrageous that the Germans now act as though they can't do for Greece what was done for them. It becomes doubly outrageous if they're going to give money to Ukraine, which is an obvious political support against Mr. Putin and so on in Russia, when they won't do it for Greece. It exposes the reality that this is much more of a political maneuver than an economic crisis. Well, in the meantime, a Grexit can now literally give you a hangover. One German entrepreneur deciding to cash in on the possibility of Greece leaving the Eurozone with a new alcoholic drink called, yep, you guessed it, it's called Grexit. A vodka lemon tipple sporting a label, uh, that label featuring uh, Tsipras and Varoufakis, uh, clinking bottles. It's also set to hit the German shelves in about two weeks. The businessman saying that he supports Greece's case and is in fact a fan of the new Greek government.